somebody come and change your mind. And welcome to the show. Today I'm going to be reviewing this beautiful Lange. I've actually borrowed it for the weekend. I'm going to go to the art museum because I'm thinking, you know, what's the classiest place uh, to rent <laughs> that I can take a watch like this? Unfortunately, I haven't booked any opera tickets, so that's out of the window. I'm actually considering drastically, before I do the new state of the collection, drastically selling off as many watches and possibly getting something really high end. You know, obviously I'm going to look at JLC, Breguet, uh, Patek, all the big boys, but I've always wanted to spend some serious time with, of course, the German, uh, the, the Zenith, yeah, little watch pun for you, the Zenith of German watchmaking. Let's go to the art gallery, have a look around. I'll gather my thoughts and give this watch a full review. Today we are looking at truly a spectacular manifestation of perfectionism and traditionalism in German-made mechanical artistry when it comes to dress watches. This is the A. Langenzone Saxonia Annual Calendar 330026 in a solid white 18 karat gold. Now, this particular piece was released at SIHH in 2010. And if you're not familiar with A. Lange & Zone, let me just uh, get you up to speed. The company was originally founded by Ferdinand Adolf Lange in Glashütte, Germany in 1845. Uh, the original A. Lange & Zone were nationalized and ceased to exist in 1948 following the occupation by the Soviet Union uh, of, you know, after World War II, obviously. And the current A. Lange & Zone trademark was then re-registered by Lange Uren GmbH. Uh, which was founded in 1990 by Walter Lange, who happens to be the great-grandson of uh, Ferdinand Lange. Uh, this effectively relaunched the brand and now has an exclusive production of around uh, 5,000 pieces a year. And these days, A. Lange and Zone are highly regarded as a high-end watch manufacturer. Notable early patrons of timepieces and owners of Lange include uh, German Emperor Wilhelm II, Abdul Hamid II of the Ottoman Empire, Alexander II of Russia. So, as you can see, some very, very important people indeed. Not to mention being one of the big five manufacturers of Fliegers during the war, which of course I've discussed many, many times. And since 2000, Lange has now become a subsidiary of the Swiss Richemont Group. And what is important to note about Lange, it boasts a very distinctive Glashütte style in appearance and design, which is actually a lot closer to the more classic and restrained uh, British style, uh, more than the Swiss, I think. Aside from their long, illustrious history, they have many technical innovations under their belt. Too many to go into now, but uh, everything from uber impressive grand complications at the turn of the last century, uh, to being the only brand to find a way to stop an oscillating balance inside a revolving tourbillon cage, and this was back in 2008. So this is a perfect example of one of their contemporary watches. Still at a modest 38.5 millimeters in diameter, it gives the watch a wonderful presence and scale on the wrist, uh, but still plenty of space to show off that beautifully balanced layout on this uh, incredibly understated silver dial. The height is a wonderfully slender 9.8 millimeters, and this is achieved by a three quarter micro rotor based automatic movement uh, which we'll discuss in just a second however lug to lug is quite considerable at 46.5 millimeters by using these simply but elegantly curved claw style lugs they do still fit the uh, proportion of the main case the lug width is 20 millimeters and the watch comes in a thick but extremely dark um, I would say bluish slate gray leather strap, although um, sometimes it does kind of look green a little bit in this particular light. Um, I have to say it looks more on the, the blue side. It's, it's quite an alluring color, I have to admit. The strap is fastened by uh, Lange's trademark uh, double position style tang buckle for extra security. You see that right there. 
and then it has a lighter pigeon grey stitching uh, with a substantial bolstering uh, in the centre of the strap, uh, which gives a rather sporty feel compared to the thinner, more, more typical alligator straps you see on dress watches. Adjustments to the complications requires a stylus on these micro pushers located within a contrasting satin finish uh, case sides there. We have them at the four, eight, nine and uh, 10 positions. The total weight is about 97 grams and it wears perfectly um, on most size wrists and even very comfortable on my six and a quarter inch wrist. Under the flat sapphire glass, uh, which does have anti-reflective coating, you'll see that little flash of um, kind of purple hue there. It's framed by a smooth, high polished sloping bezel, which um, assists any cuff to slide over it with ease. The days are displayed on the left, and then on the right we have the months of the year. At the bottom we have a very traditional bosom cut window with an enticing twinkle of the moon phase which is in a kind of high polish then immediately opposite that at the top perfectly placed of course that uh, trademark 12 o'clock outsized double date window this date and its style of lettering is very particular to the brand these design elements are inspired in fact by a stage clock at dresden's opera house and the customized um, typography is based on the engraver's font from 1899. Very quintessentially German, and if you are a Wagnerian like me, um, you might get an extra kick out of this connection to German art and culture. The hands are all blued and in the Lance style, as you can see, and I think they really complement the laser etched blue of, of the starry sky with the classically polished moon uh, uh, for the moon phase, which also doubles as the sub-seconds window. Around the periphery of the dial, we see uh, delicate black printing, small battens with applied dots to indicate the hours, um, almost modernizing it somewhat. Uh, this also helps to distract less attention away from the many complications this watch manages to pack in without seeming overly complicated or busy. The graceful placement of the of these details, the guilloche concentric patterns, the clear capitalization of the lettering, and the way they all relate to each other gives a supreme sense of balance and um, something Fibonacci himself would be proud of. However, the real star of the show has to be on the inside, and if we turn it over there, you see we have a true marvel from the long-established German engineering tradition. As we all know, Germany, after all, was one of the very first innovators and makers of mechanical watches, long before the Swiss, in fact. One only has to look at the portable timepieces that were made possible by the invention of the mainspring in the early 15th century by Nuremberg clockmaker Peter Henlein to see what I mean. Fast forward to right now and we see this stunning in-house manufactured automatic caliber L085-1. Uh, it beats at 21,600 vibrations an hour, composed of 476 parts in a three-quarter plate containing 43 joules and has an approximate power reserve of 46 hours. The company employs hand finishing on all their pieces. This uh, exquisitely hand-engraved uh, balance cock is the brand's signature technique and Lange use a multitude of different surface decorations throughout this piece. Here we see chamfering, black polishing, circular graining, contour grinding, engraving, mirror polish, linear finish, um, blued screws, pelage, glass hute stripes, and sunray finishes as well. So absolutely chock-a-block full of true horturology refinement. The movement also employs a very clever um, zero reset function, which is unique to the brand and was introduced in 1997. So if I pull out the crown there, you see that the sub seconds has reset to the 12 o'clock position. And then when I pop it up back in, if you just keep your eyes uh, on that little sub seconds, you see it gets going again. 
This is a very handy feature that makes synchronizing uh, with a reference time obviously more accurate and easier. My favorite detail has to be, however, uh, that swan neck regulator that really evokes the feeling and link to the heyday of Lange's golden age or golden era of pocket watch manufacturing. Interestingly, the bi-directional winding of the micro rotor, which is a solid gold, is fitted with a platinum outer section. These differing materials, platinum of course being heavier, makes the weight of the winding mass extremely efficient. And this is all bewitchingly displayed for you with this very wide sapphire display back. So you really get to enjoy this uh, exquisite piece of mechanical mastery. So uh, my initial impressions, it's a lot heavier than I expected. In fact, when I first strapped it on, I thought maybe this is the platinum version, but actually you can tell the difference between this, the white gold and the platinum, because the platinum doesn't have the, the blued hands, which is one of my favorite features. I, I, I think I have a thing for blued hands ever since the, uh, the Spitfire Amiga I, I purchased. But yeah, it's, it is quite a heavy piece. Could be something to do with the 470 odd components inside that amazing movement. Okay, so you might remember this from uh, last year's video. Was it last year or was it the year before? I can't even remember, but yeah. The Rodin Museum. If you've been to the one in Paris, uh, then you're gonna love this one. But they've also got a version of the Hell's Gate, which is just amazing. And of course, a reproduction of the Thinker. And it's on the way to the big art gallery that is just over there. There you go, look, <laughs> look, <laughs> Langy, Langy. I'm gonna call it Langy. Um, I shouldn't get too attached to it though, you know? Right guys, so we're here at the museum, uh, gonna go up the rocky steps. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna do the rocky thing like I did in that first video when I joined Watchbox. Um, but yeah, this place, to me, it's one of the main attractions. If not the attraction, you have to come and see when you visit Philadelphia, one of the greatest uh, collections of art in the world. And trust me, that, that's a lot, coming from somebody who's lived in New York, in Barcelona and London, this is up there, certainly. So, um, yeah, let's go inside, have a look at some uh, classics. So what about the positives and negatives? Well, we'll start with the positives first. Uh, it's a perfect design. Subtle details, an alluring simplicity that is timeless and will forever be good taste. It unquestionably has a class to it. Uh, I, I love that you can set and forget it once a year. And also its size. Normally I complain things are too big, but I really do feel this is a crowd pleaser uh, in its scale. It's a modern size and great for every day. I also love the fact it contains the zero set mechanism. A little bit of ingenuity and innovation that is unique to the brand, uh, as well as all its you know other design traits like the date, display, etc. I have to say, I think the price is reasonable, especially on the used market. For what Watchbox is selling it for, you get a lot for your money. I think it's a lot of bang for your buck. Um, horologically, quality, uh, the prestige of it, uh, you know, especially compared to what else is out on the market. And I never thought I'd say this about such an expensive, well, for me, uh, you know, a, high, a really high-end piece. It's not verging on the ridiculous, like, you know, a protect world time or whatever, uh, when, when you really get up into the, closer to the 100,000 mark, when that kind of price almost becomes vulgar, you know. Um, I could certainly see myself buying one of these. It's from here. <laughs> Reminds me of my aunt's house. Uh, in London, look, look at that, oh, a bit of horology. Love the chandeliers, I think Hugo would really like this. In terms of negatives, I have to say that my biggest disappointment was this little signed crown. It's incredibly difficult to get any purchase on it and actually use it. Um, not because I'm wearing gloves, but actually just, you know, we'd, normally every day, um, I thought perhaps this is just me, so I asked a friend of mine if he had the same problem pulling out the crown, and it's 
not very ergonomic. While I don't think it's the size, I think it's actually the way it sits in relation to the case. You just can't get a, a good grip on it. Also, obviously, the low water resistance, but this is something inherent of all dress watches. I would have loved it to be 50 meters. At least then I wouldn't have to worry about it so much. This is a piece that I would have to actually look at the weather forecast and make sure it's not gonna rain that day uh, before heading out. My last negative is the 18 karat white gold. That is not something uh, conducive of everyday wear. It is on the softer side. Would it be blasphemous to see this in a stainless steel? Um, why not, you know? Having said that, Personally, I'd like to go for yellow gold. As far as I know, uh, they only do this in uh, platinum and rose gold, but I'd like yellow obviously to match my wedding ring and my signet ring. Then again, that's just my personal preference. So yeah, I'd probably end up going rose gold. But anyway, stunning all the same. This watch is unequivocally pure class. When it comes to the German dress watches, Lange is unquestionably the best because it embodies so many hallmarks unique to the watchmaking of Glashütte. And let's not forget, this is the historic birthplace of the German watchmaking industry. This watch exudes class and sophistication with an aesthetic that is distinct to the brand. And in terms of value, there is of course the Langmatic Perpetual in white gold. But at half the price, I think this annual calendar, while obviously not as advanced, is uh, far more realistic and attainable. Arguably, achieves a cleaner look and gives the wearer a similar feel. At the end of the day, the annual calendar is a rare complication. Not many are made since it was first introduced by Patek in 1996. Ultimately, it is something very special that only needs to be set once a year and therefore meant to be worn on special occasions. But what I like the most about this watch is that I feel I could quite happily wear it more casually. My only apprehension would be the 30 meter water resistance, but in conclusion, it is surprisingly more versatile than any other true dress watch I've ever experienced. The convenience and practicality of the annual calendar makes it a compelling option for those that require something uh, more formal, but not just for those situations where you are suited and booted, but for every day too. This for me is my first choice when it comes to a dress watch in this particular price range, way ahead of the more predictable Swiss options, perhaps even the ultimate dress watch in its class. Fantastic, there's so much in there, I, I couldn't possibly capture it all on video, but there was one thing horologically related, rather poignant and moving was this photograph of a watch that had frozen uh, from Japan 1945, obviously because of the big bomb dropping, so that was kind of interesting and related to their channel. But. Um, my closing thoughts on the Lange, uh, well, obviously I adore it. Um, I, I almost consider it the perfect dress watch. Is it gonna be my next grail? Possibly, I've gotta investigate a little bit more. I wanna try out some JLCs, uh, obviously Patek, um, what's the other one, Breguet is also on the, the radar. I'm gonna go to the bar, have some vodka. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, found it useful. Oh, and don't forget to Add your thoughts. What do you think is the perfect dress watch? Please do add that in the comments. So I'm going to leave it there, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Ciao.